times I get sick. Oh, Lord. I'm in despair. Oh, Lord. But you said you would be right. Oh, Lord. You promised you would always be there.
um, if uh, if any if if you are voting in Chester, they have uh, early locations at Ella Street. Again, this announcement will be in the office as well. And the last announcement, we would like to thank everyone who participated in the Fall Festival yesterday. I had a good time. I don't know about nobody else, but I had a good time. So we'd like to thank all of the volunteers and everyone who helped us. Thank you. Oh, one more now. Thank you, Ms. Ronika. Um, next Sunday, the fourth Sunday, will be our Pink and Pearls Sunday. So wear your pink for, for um, breast cancer awareness. And um, we have uh, my auntie who will speak um, next week about breast cancer awareness. And then on fifth Sunday, we have ch um, Children's Church and um, so our, all of our youth will be going back, and they're going to have a wonderful time in the Lord in the back. And then we're going to be wearing our purple and pearls and sneakers for Fifth Sunday for domestic violence. And I have a special guest that's going to speak during that time as well. So, again, next Sunday it's pink, pearls and sneakers, or pink and pearls, however you want to do that. Pink, no pearls. Okay. And then Fifth Sunday is um, purple and pearls and sneakers for domestic violence. So come on, guys. We're going to show up and show out, right? Amen. And all of our guests, you are welcome to come on back. And look at here. Look, come here, Kim. Get, get over here. Come on. Come on. Yeah, you might as well. She's going to do announcements, and then I'm going to come back. Good morning, everyone. Youth Department, just want to thank everyone, everyone, everyone. Come out on yesterday, started on Friday. The deaconess come out and helped us set up, and then all the deacons and everybody else came on yesterday. The food was good. We had delicious dessert. It was just amazing. We tired, but thank God we made it through. <laughs> oh, God. But we tired. It was a struggle to get up this morning, but I know by the grace of God, we made it here. So we thank you all again for coming out and hope we can do this again. Look here. Look, 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 look. Y'all don't know it, but these two divas, these two divas did that thing yesterday. <laughs> Me and Pastor said we want them to be in charge. And, and, and they did that. They handled the organization. They handled everything with such elegance, fervor. And I am, I'm loving. I'm loving what they're doing with our youth. They are to be commended for allowing God to use them on yesterday. I love you, and I appreciate you more than you know. I have a special blessing for you, but you can't get it yet. No, you don't get to say no to me. Okay, tell him. Well, and, and I want to thank the Dickersons that helped out yesterday. Let, let me tell y'all, we, we had a couple of days getting that ready, but when I tell y'all, <laughs> we, we love serving God, and however he tells us to do it, we are, we're going to be there. We're going to do what God requires of us, but... um. I doubt my husband will come out anyway. But thank you all for helping yesterday to be an awesome blessing. Amen? Amen. Did everybody hear that? They said that we had food. Yeah. Uh, left over from yesterday's event, we still have you back to warm it up and then be ready after service. Amen. <laughs> so, I want to thank those uh, youth leaders as well. And I know the pastor will say he can do the same thing, but just to echo her sentiments, thank you guys so much. And um, I know I told you that I would be here, but I didn't realize that I had to work. And as, as a lawn service guy, Air raining semen is your business. Money making semen. 
So that's the only reason I'm But I was here Monday night. Amen. Amen. So at this time, we would like for our um, trustees to come forward and get ready for our offering. And during the offering, we're going to ask that our hymn choir give us a selection, if they will. Praise God.
Thank you so much, Him Choir, for that wonderful selection. Praise God. Praise God. Thank you guys so much. At this time, we will have a selection coming from our choir. And after that, we will have the spoken word. Amen.
we do. I don't know about you, but it's hard for me to sit when I start talking about my Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ, because he's done so much for me, and he's blessed me and my family. We had a young daughter that was born two pound, 15 ounces, no, one pound, 15 ounces at birth, so I know what I'm talking about. When, when, Ashley, when Ashley was born, her lungs were so premature that they didn't think she was going to make it. But you know what? I knew she would make it. And my wife knew she would make it. But they said she would have all kind of uh, uh, things going on with her body. They said that her eyes would not be fully developed. She couldn't see that she would require glasses early on. They said that she would have breathing issues. She would have to walk with a, with a, with a breathing machine, with, with oxygen. And she had oxygen for a while. She did. But it was God's grace that we're here today. So when you talk about his grace, I'm serious about his grace. It is only by his grace that we're here today. If he took the air from us, where would we be? If you don't believe it, ask somebody that has a problem with, with issues, with their oxygen. Ask them how blessing, how much of a blessing it is to be able to breathe on our own. And I get it. We take it for granted. I do too. I do too. But if the Lord jammed this thumb, this right hand, I wouldn't be able to drive for a living. If the Lord hurt this pinky, you wouldn't be able to change diapers. Some of you wouldn't be able to wash dishes. So it's only because of his grace that we're here today. And I'm grateful for it. So how many of you are grateful for his grace? Let's try it one more time. Can we just give him honor, glory, and praise for his grace today? He's kept us. He's a keeper. He's a healer. He's a healer, and I know what I'm talking about. He's a deliverer, because I was on alcohol. Some of you have been on drugs. I've heard your story. He knows all about us. So when we come into the house, let's give him all the honor, all the glory, and all the praises, because this could be our last time. I don't know. It may be my last time. I don't know. But I'm going to praise him while I got a chance. To God be the glory. Thank you so much, choir. Thank you so much, hymn choir. Thank you so much, musicians. Thank you so much, Cedar Grove. Thank you so much, guests. We welcome you this morning. It took all of us to usher in his spirit this morning. Just like it takes a village to raise a child, it takes a village to usher in the, uh, the, the praises of the Lord. He said he, 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 he encompasses the praises of his people. That's what he said. He said he inhabits the praises of his people. If he didn't need me, if he didn't need you, he would have told us. If he just needed, uh, 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 if he just needed Deacon, uh, Deacon right here, if that's all he needed, he would have said it. But he said he inhabits the praises of his people, choir. It takes all of us. Thank you. Thank you so much. Musicians, continue to do your thing. Continue to play softly. 
Thank you so much to our musicians. Thank you so much for all of you that are visiting with us this morning. We welcome you to Cedar Grove Missionary Baptist Church, where again, we are shepherded by our pastor, Pastor Harold E. Harris Sr., a great man of God. He's vacationing this morning with his family, and we just want to say good morning, Pastor. On three, everybody say good morning, Pastor. Okay, on three, one, two, three. Good morning, Pastor. Amen, amen. We hope you heard that loud and clear. He told me on last night that um, he said, I know you got this. He said, but I'll be watching. I said, that's wonderful, Pastor. So we thank you. We thank God for our pastor. We thank God for our deacons, our trustees. We thank God for the leadership of this church because we, we've found our way to press on even through a pandemic. Even through a pandemic. The Lord took care of us on yesterday as we celebrated our youth. And I just want to give one more shout out to the youth department, to our new youth department, to our leaders. We thank you so much, guys. And to all of you that have volunteered. I know from being at this church, I've learned that there's a lot of people that don't mind being behind the scenes. And I love that because I'm a behind the, I'm a behind the scenes man. Yes, I am. But when God calls me to the forefront, I'm coming for war. I'm coming for war. So I just want to thank you guys uh, for allowing me to stand before you this morning. Thank you, Pastor, once again. And I just want to take, just for a moment, if there's any of my family and friends, any of my family members that have uh, come this morning, I'd like for you to stand this morning. If I have any families. Praise God. <laughs> Praise God. Is there anybody that has anything to say? Please. Bring y'all greetings from Board Hill Baptist Church. My name is Pamela Hall. The non minister is Pastor um, T.J. Barber. Amen. Amen. That's my cousin, y'all. <laughs> praise God for whom all blessings flow. Hallelujah. There's praise on the inside. <laughs> yeah. I can myself. Yeah. There's a holler. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. So excuse me. Come on now. That's all right. I seem a little. Come on now. All right. Kitty. Oh, we just praise is the way. I say that. Yes, sir. Those of you that don't know, that's my sister, y'all. That's my real sister, my biological sister. That's a Joseph. That's what that is. So if I seem a little bit giddy to you, <laughs> I might just can't keep it to myself. Praise is the way we say thanks. That's what we do. That's how we was raised by a single mother. But we were taught that praise is the way we say thanks. Huh? Glory. Glory. Glory.
Hillary. Thank you. Thank you to my cousin, Pam. Thank you to my sister, Sylvia. Thank you, Jesus. No, 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 no. Don't sit. Don't sit. Remain standing in the rear. We're coming to you. Oh, yes. Holy Spirit, have your way. Have your way. Have your way. Have your way. Because praise is the way I say thanks. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Boy, we got some bad musicians, don't we? Oh, my God. We got some bad musicians down here at Cedar Grove. Pastor, do you hear them boys working over there? Oh, my God. Go ahead. Go ahead, musicians. Glory, musicians. Glorify him, Antonio. Glorify him, DJ. Glorify him. Yes. Glorify him. He inhabits the praises of his people. Yes, sir. Praise is the way I say thanks. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Praise is the way I say thanks. One more time. Can we all say it? Say praise is the way I say thanks. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Go ahead, choir. Go ahead, choir. Thank you, thank you, thank you. Hallelujah. Thank you, Holy Spirit. We got to move on. We got to move on. Ah, oh, yeah. Ah, oh, yeah, but here at Cedar Grove, we recognize the Holy Spirit, and we just get on out the way. We understand when the Holy Spirit is moving, you get on out the way. Yes, sir, my brothers and sisters, when the water is being stirred, there's a healing that can take place. Do you understand what I'm saying? When the water is being stirred, there's a healing that can take place. Somebody's here this morning, they're sick in their bodies. They, they don't feel very well this morning. So when there's a stirring of the Spirit, you have to allow the Holy Spirit to do His work. If you don't understand it, you will. Keep on living. Keep on living. But thank you so much, musicians. Thank you, choir. We have a bad choir also. We have a bad praise team, but we have a bad choir also. And we have some bad musicians and some bad singers, some bad hymn choir members. Yes, sir. Yes, sir, we thank you. It's okay to be a little cocky in Jesus' name. Not in your flesh and blood now, but in Jesus' name. Because we're giving him all the glory and the praises, that's all. Thank you to my cousin Pam. Thank you to my sister Sylvia. But that's what we do. Now, we had, I saw some standing in the rear. I'm going to ask you to please stand one more time. Thank you for your patience, my friends. Amen. 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 Thank you, Doreen, Kelsey. Thank you so much. Thank you to all. Are there any more? We don't want to admit anyone right now. Is there anyone? Else? Are there any ministers in the building? Are there any other ministers besides our, besides our homegrown? Is there any other ministers in the building? We have homegrown here. I know we have homegrown, and I love it. They sit on the first couple of rows. So if you want to know who our ministerial staff is, look on this front couple of rows along with our deacons. Thank you so much. Thank you so much. 
but we got to move on. We got to do communion, guys, after this. And if you, if you think it's not robbery, if you need to slip out, I understand. <clears throat> we do understand. If you need to slip out, there'll be a pause before we go into communion. And we ask that you ease out. But we're hoping that you will go to the rear because they have food waiting for us. <clears throat> if you will, again, we, again, I want to thank Pastor. I want to thank God first and foremost my Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. Um, I thank you because the song that they sing, that you guys sing, that, that grace, that was very, very applicable because I know that it's only by gra the grace of God that I stand here before you this morning. My wife will tell you that I was a trip at one time. She'll tell you. Uh, we're going to read about a brother today, Zacchaeus. I was just like Zacchaeus. Um, Zacchaeus was Zacchaeus was a ooh. I ain't gonna call nobody no fool, but Zacchaeus was a ooh. <laughs> and my wife will tell you, John John Jay was a was a was a ooh. <laughs> At some point in time, my cousin Pam will tell you that John Jay was a ooh. <laughs> my sister Sylvia will tell you. So for those that know me, my name is Minister John Joseph. And I am an associate minister of Cedar Grove Missionary Baptist Church, again, where we are our pastors, Harold E. Harris, and his absent. But I thank God for the awesome opportunity. Thank you to these deacons, to my deacons, man. Um, because I know that our deacons get word from our pastor who's going to preach. And I thank God that they didn't balk at me having this opportunity. So thank you, deacons. Thank you so much. I mean that from the bottom of my heart. Thank you so much. Now, without further ado... Uh, please turn with me to Luke chapter 19. Luke chapter 19, beginning at verse 1, and it, it's our custom to stand here at Cedar Grove. So when you find that word, Luke chapter 19, beginning at verse 1. Anthony, how you doing, man? Our brother Anthony, for those that you don't, don't know, um, they're not members yet, and I did say yet, but Anthony, he, he lost his mother and father within a span of six months. So if you get an opportunity, love on them for a while, but they are a lovely couple. Hey, sis, I ain't forget about you, but I thank God for them as well, and I'm sure many of you have probably reached out to them, but I just want to, to make that known. We, we, we are family here at Cedar Grove. Sister Dapp, when I first met Sister Dapp, she told me, she said, we're family down here, bro. She said, nah, you know, you know how Dapp is, bro. I'm going to tell you something, bro. Now, you, you, might, you might not know me, but I'm going to let you know something, bro. You don't talk about none of my members down here in Cedar Grove. We were over at Flint Hill Baptist Church. And I said, I got to come to that church. Y'all think I'm lying. She said, now the word's going forward, brother. We're like a family. And that's what we are. We're like a family here. Luke chapter 1, Luke chapter 19, beginning at verse 1. I'll be reading from the New King James Version. And yours should read similar. Then Jesus entered and passed through Jericho. Let me read that again. Then Jesus entered and passed through Jericho. Now behold, there was a man named Zacchaeus who was a chief tax collector, and he was rich. And he sought to see who Jesus was, but could not because of the crowd, because of the crowd, because of the crowd, because of the crowd, for he was of short stature. So he ran ahead and climbed up into a sycamore tree to see him, for he was going to pass that way. And when Jesus came to the place, he looked up and saw and said to him, Zacchaeus, Make haste and come down, for today I must stay at your crib. I mean, your house. <laughs> so he made haste and he came down and received him joyfully. But when they saw it, they all complained, saying, He has gone to be a guest with a man who is a sinner. Verse number 8 says, Then Zacchaeus stood and said to the Lord, Look, Lord, I give half of my goods to the poor, and if I have taken anything from anyone by false accusations, I restore fourfold. And Jesus said to him, today salvation has come to this house. The man got saved, y'all. Today salvation has come to this house, 
because he also is a son of Abraham. Uh, for the Son of Man has come to seek and to save that which was lost. Let me say that again. For the Son of Man has come to seek and to save that which was lost. And as we dig into the word of God, I would like to use for a subject, if I may, still seek Jesus. Still seek Jesus. Let us pray. Heavenly Father, we thank you, Lord, once again for this awesome opportunity, Father, to come to give your name all the honor, the glory, and the praises. Father, we lift you up because you said that if I be lifted up, that you would draw all men unto me. Father, we thank you, Lord, for your son, Jesus. We thank you for the beatings and this being spit upon and, and, and crucified that you took for our sins. Father, we're so glad, we're so happy that you came to seek and to save those that are lost. In Jesus' name we pray, amen and amen. The gospel, the gospel of Luke, <clears throat> it's a written proclamation of the truth about Jesus Christ. Dr. Luke, the author of Acts, in case you didn't know, he's writing to declare the glorious news that the Son of Man, God's Son, has come to earth to seek and to save that which are lost. And that includes black people, white people, Hispanics. Jews and Gentiles, Asians, if that don't fit you, rich or poor, healthy or sick. But Dr. Luke's gospel, I love it, Sister Tanya, because it's an accurate and an orderly account of the truth about Jesus Christ. And for those of you uh, who attended Sunday school years ago, you know the story of Zacchaeus, or I'm sure you have at least heard the song. And I know we got some bad musicians right here, but don't y'all don't y'all mess this song up for me, because I'm I'm gonna remind our old school, old schools about a song that we used to sing. So DJ, don't try this. Zacchaeus was a wee little man, a wee little man was he. He climbed up in a sycamore tree for Jesus he could see. Y'all remember that song? Deke, I know you remember that song. I know some of some of you old school. Some, some of you new school, DJ and Ashley and Anthony, you guys haven't heard that. But that was a song that, well, that was, a, that was a, a lesson that was taught back in Sunday school. And, 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 but I want you to understand something this morning. That Zacchaeus' statue isn't what the story is about. The sycamore tree, it isn't what the story is about. But the central focus, Kelsey of this story is Zacchaeus' radical transformation from a greedy tax collector to one who is now a repentant follower of Jesus Christ. In other words, Zacchaeus had issues, just like you and I, but he still seek Jesus. So regardless of how many times, Deacon Knox, you've heard this story, Dr. Luke's focus is on the humanity of Jesus Christ. And he lets us know that they are very practical and insightful lessons uh, one can take from this particular story. In Luke, in Luke chapter 19 and verse 1, it says it begins with Jesus entering and passing through Jericho. In verse 18, as you recall, which is the previous chapter, we had Jesus was coming near Jericho. So in chapter 18, follow me now. Jesus was coming near Jericho, but in chapter 19, he was entering and he was passing through Jericho. Are you following me? And as it were, we have here Jesus passing through Jericho. And don't you know anytime Jesus is in the house, something good is bound to happen? Can I get a witness? Whenever Jesus is present, something good is bound to happen. And my brothers and sisters, you have to understand that back in ancient time, the Bible was one long, uh, uh, one long, uh, uh, one long continuous. That's what I'm trying to say. One long continuous message of the gospel. And 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 what I'm saying is, later on, uh, when God gave wisdom to man, man was able to differentiate with the chapters. 
But before, again, chapter 18, he was coming and getting ready to pass through. Chapter 19, he was already there and continuing to pass through. But don't you know that whenever Jesus is passing through, there's still someone that he has to touch, Sister Dab. When Jesus is coming through, remember the woman at the well? The woman at the well, she had slept with many men. You know what I'm talking about. Some of you, I'm sure, can attest to that. But the woman at the well was, was doing her thing. And she, when she came to the well, she was coming during a very opportune time during the middle of the day. She was ashamed because she had slept with so many men. And when she approached the well, Jesus was there. And I'm sure she probably thought, Brother Alo, was that one of the ones I slept with? But nevertheless, Jesus touched her too. So as Jesus coming through, he meets a man named Zacchaeus. And the Bible says he was a chief tax collector and he was rich. Not only was he a tax collector, but he was the chief tax collector. And that means he had some men under him. Are you following me? But the Bible says that he was also, he was rich. And as he was coming through, uh, as he met this chief tax collector, uh, I've got to get, I've got to give you the background before I can give you the rundown. Zacchaeus, he had all the pleasures that money could buy. The Bible says the man was rich. And when the Bible says you're rich, you're, you're rich. But he had all the pleasures that money could buy. And, 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 and I don't know about you, but in today, today's vernacular, he was uh, one that would have been referred to as a big brawler shot caller. Are you following me? Zacchaeus probably had a couple of houses. He probably owned a couple of businesses. Zacchaeus was rich. He was very wealthy. He probably owned a couple of airplanes. And then I had to look this one up, Sister Sylvia. Uh, I think Zacchaeus owned a, a, a 1500 Dodge Ram truck. Off white, I think. But although Zacchaeus was rich, Zacchaeus was like many of our sisters and brothers that are rich. He would have had a very hard time parting with those riches. And the Bible tells me that what, what profits a man to gain the whole world but to lose his soul? So Zacchaeus would have had a hard time parting with these riches. The Lord, don't get me wrong, the Lord don't mind us having things, but that things don't have you. Are you following me? And as a tax collector, he was bitterly hated and despised for three reasons. Number one, he was a tax collector, and he served the Roman government. And most tax collectors back during the day were Jews. But in the people's eyes, they were seen as traitors who denied their Jewish heritage and betrayed their country. Somewhat some that we would call a uh, deacon, we would call them a uh, sellout or an, an Uncle Tom, if you will. There's a couple of them in Georgia right now. Are you, are you, are you working with me? Or sellouts. So one, he worked for the Roman government. Number two, he was a cheat. The man was dishonest. He was an unjust man. He was a sinner, just like you and I. And most tax collectors were extremely wealthy. The Roman government compensated these brothers by allowing them to collect more taxes than the percentages that were required for taxes. Tax collectors greedily abused their privileges by adding whatever percentage that they wished and felt could be collected. So they were despised, and, and not because of their wealth and their position, uh, 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 but because of the way they had accrued wealth. Check it out now. Antonio, they were taking bribes from the wealthy who wished to avoid taxes. Sound familiar? He was fleecing the average citizen and swindling the government when they could. And number three, they were assuming rights that only belonged to God. God alone was the king of the Jews. And Zacchaeus, the Bible says that he was a small man. Zacchaeus was tall on the job. Watch this now. But he was small in the home. Can I get a witness? Zacchaeus was large on the job. <laughs> but he was small in the home. Zacchaeus was large in the church, my brothers and sisters. He had position and power. 
But whenever you came to him with a problem or an issue, he didn't know how to deal with it. Zacchaeus would have said something like this. What you crying for? You crying again? What you crying for? You got me? Zacchaeus thought he was a bag. He thought he was all that in a bag of chips. In other words. But the reason the Bible tells us, Anthony, that Zacchaeus was small is because we're all small at some point in our lives. All of us are small at some juncture in our lives. Oprah Winfrey was talking about how she would interview uh, these presidents and, and, and uh, Beyonce and, and Nan Bird and place things like that. But when, he would, when, when, when she would interview them, they said, they would talk about how when the interview was finished, uh, uh, brother, they would say, uh, did, how did I do? How did I do? Now, we're talking about presidents, President Obama, uh, 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 President Carter, President Nan Bird. Y'all feel me? Y'all get what I'm saying? But these were people that were, were, were uh, uh, prestigious uh, in the communities. And after the interview, they would come to Oprah and say, how did I do? So we're all small. You, you, you got to get this now. I know when you read this text, you probably just read over that Zacchaeus was small. But, but you probably thought about his height and his stature, which the Bible does talk about, his stature. But I did some research on, 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 on Brother Zacchaeus. And I found out that he was probably the size of the greatest of all time, the GOAT, Simone Biles. Simone Biles was about 4 foot 10, 4 foot 8, I believe. But Zacchaeus was even shorter than that. So you know he had some self-esteem issues. Can I, get, can I get a witness? He was just like us. He was small, but he had issues. But how many of you know that no flesh shall glory in God's presence? That's what I'm talking about. And in the Gospel of Luke, chapter 19, beginning at number 3, it says that he, and he sought. He sought to see who Jesus was. But he could not because of the crowd. But Zacchaeus sought to see who Jesus was. Zac Zacchaeus, he, he, he longed for an opportunity to just get a glimpse of Jesus the Christ. Are you walking with me? And whenever Jesus' presence is in the room, you have, to, you have to be ambitious towards him. And you have to find out what's going on when, when the presence of the good Lord is in the room. So Zacchaeus pressed his way to see Jesus. Regardless of his wealth, regardless of his pleasures and his, the comforts that he enjoyed by his wealth, Zacchaeus was apparently empty and lonely. Can I get a witness? Tax collectors, they lived long and hate. They, were, they lived long lives, but they were hated by the people. But he's still seeking Jesus. Zacchaeus was jacked up, but he still sought Jesus. Antonio, Zacchaeus was dishonest, but he still sought Jesus. Zacchaeus was a gossiper, but he still sought Jesus. God, Zacchaeus was a whoremonger, but he still sought Jesus. He was a robber, but he still sought Jesus. And I'm here today to tell you, ladies and gentlemen, that no matter what you have done, no matter what you've done, or how bad it was when you did it, wise men still seek Jesus. Because it, he said in his word that he has came to seek and to save that which was lost. So you might have, you might be turning up, you might be turning up even right now. Can I get a witness? You, you might be, you might be smoking a little bit. Sister Sarah, you might. You might be turning up. But regardless of what you're doing, still seek Jesus. Many of you, my brothers and sisters, may not be smoking. You may not be drinking. But you're doing the other hidden things of the heart. Like jealousy of somebody. Can I get a witness? What about anger? What about bitterness? 
What about backbiting? You may not be sleeping with somebody's husband, but if you're over there telling lies on them, you'll know better. Can I get a witness? So I want you to know that regardless of what you're doing, what you have done, today is the day of salvation. Can I get a witness? Some of you have low self-esteem. Some of you don't feel don't feel up to things. You don't feel like you, you should be in the house of the Lord. You don't feel worthy of coming to the house of the Lord. But I'm still, my still, I still want to tell you to still seek Jesus. Because he's waiting for you with open arms. Can I get a witness? Many of us don't understand. Many of us don't understand that in this walk, you still got to be determined. You've got to be determined. And have a seat. I'm not finished yet. We, we draw into a close. But you may feel like you don't measure up, Ashley. You may, you may feel like people are going farther than you. You may feel like you're not educated enough. You may feel like you don't have enough money, Sister Deb. You, but we all, we all have fallen short and come short of God's glory. Can I get a witness? So Dr. Luke wanted us to know that, 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 that there was a crowd being formed at this time uh, as Zac Zacchaeus went and as he sought the Lord. And, and as you come Sunday after Sunday seeking the Lord, there's always an usher going to get in your way. I know, I know. That there's somebody going to stop you and tell you to take that gum out of your mouth. I, I know, I know you're going to get upset. Uh, uh, there's always traffic on, getting in your way as you approach the house of God. But as Zacchaeus was coming, I want you to notice something that, 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 that the crowd got in the way. And how many of you know that the crowd will still get in your way? The crowd will get in your way. And, and as Zacchaeus tried to uh, uh, take a piercing look at Jesus Christ, uh, he was being elbowed. He was being spit upon. He was being kicked. And Zacchaeus was short in stature. He was a little man. So can you imagine? Can you imagine? Sister Deb, I can picture it in my mind that Zacchaeus probably came to Sister Deb's house. Bruh, who was that? Bruh, go to the door, Andy. Andy comes to the door. Who is this? It's Zacchaeus. I come to collect my money. It ain't no telling what, 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 what sis probably told him. You know, you know sis, you better go to Cedar Grove first and then come back here. I know that's what sis told him. So, 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 so can you imagine after this man knocked on your door early Saturday morning looking for some money, trying to collect money, and you know he's a tax collector, you know he's crooked, you know he's not doing what he's really supposed to be doing, you know that he's fleecing the, the, the crowd, you know that he's taking more than what he's supposed to do. Can you imagine now as Jesus is coming through, now he's coming to see Jesus? I'm pretty sure in my mind's eye, he was elbowed, he was spit, he was kicked, and he was kneed. So what he does when, he, when we face opposition, just think, just think, Ashley, if, if Zacchaeus would have ended the story right there, if Zacchaeus would have tried to, to see Jesus and he was pushed and, and pushed out, don't come back to our church. This is our church. We family owned around here. You ain't nobody. You go. What if Zacchaeus would have tripped? What if he would have quit right then? The story would have never been told. If Zacchaeus would have quit, when you feel like quitting, when you, when you fail a test, when you don't do as well in school as you think you ought to, when you didn't do as good on the job as you thought you ought to, when, when, when you want to quit, when you want to quit, you got to press your way through. But what if Zacchaeus would have quit? The story would have never been told. That's what I like about it. That's what the Holy Spirit gave to me. What if he would have quit? But he didn't quit. Zacchaeus kept going, DJ. He kept going. He kept pressing, although there were obstacles in his way. He kept pressing because he wanted to see the Lord Jesus. And he didn't let embarrassment get to him. He, he wasn't embarrassed about it, Kelsey. We know when things happen in our lives, a lot of times we get embarrassed by things. We don't want to approach men and women no more. We don't want to come to church. First thing we do, we quit coming to church. When things happen, we quit coming to church. But I'm here to tell you that you can't quit. You, you, you can't. It's too vital. You have to do what Zacchaeus did. Uh, uh, Zacchaeus, he, 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 took his, he took his pants and he rolled his pants up. He rolled up the sleeve. He said, all right, y'all kicking me out, but I'm, I'm going somewhere. So he takes off running. He, take, he took off running now, and he found a sycamore tree. 
a sycamore tree was a big old tree that had a big root, big, big trunk. And it was easily, you can easily climb that tree, Anthony. You can climb that sycamore tree, and it also provided lots and lots of shade. But what I like about it, Zacchaeus wasn't embarrassed. He didn't get embarrassed. He didn't let his pride get in the way. Come on, somebody. He didn't let his pride get in the way. This man ran and found a sycamore tree, ran up the tree, and he so he can get a view of Jesus. Back then in those days, men didn't run. Men, men, a grown man running was seen as foolishness. If you don't believe me, remember the story of, 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 of the prodigal son? Remember the prodigal son when the boy came back home? What did he do? His father saw him from a long way off. The boy, the boy's dad took off running. My son has returned. He took off running. He had to hold up his tunic. This was a man of God. He had to tie up his tunic. And, what, and then he, when he tied his tunic off, So when this brother took off running, it was, seen, it was seen as being foolish. One more story. In the previous chapter, chapter 18 of Luke chapter of Luke, Luke's gospel, the blind man, when the blind Bartimaeus, Mark calls him blind Bartimaeus, the rest of the Bible just says a blind man. But my Bible tells me he was blind Bartimaeus. But blind Bartimaeus sat by the road. He was begging. This brother was used to begging. He was making a pretty good living by begging. But when he heard Jesus was coming, Jesus of Nazareth was coming by. He said, "Who? what's going on? What's all the commotion, Deacon Arlo? They said, Jesus, son of Nazareth, is coming by. He said, what? And he was blind. He couldn't see. Jesus, son of David, have mercy on me. Jesus, son of David. Have mercy on me. And then the crowd, the crowd, the crowd told him to be quiet. So that's what I'm telling you, Dick. The crowd would get in your way sometimes. But when he but when he cried, when they told him to be quiet, Pam, he cried out on the all. Jesus, Jesus, son of David, have mercy on me. What my point is, my point is sometimes you gotta take a child like faith to get to Jesus. Many times we have pride in our way. But this man, he yelled out for Jesus. And this man, Zacchaeus, took off running. Back in the day, you wasn't seen as running to, for, no, for nothing. You were seen as a fool. So when he ran, when he ran and climbed up in the tree, sycamore tree, as Jesus of Nazareth came by, this is what I like about it. As he was seeking Jesus, Jesus all along was seeking him, Anthony. When you think that you're seeking Jesus and you think that you're not being seen, Jesus was seeking him all along, ladies and gentlemen. And I want to tell you, brothers and sisters, what the Holy Spirit gave to me. As Jesus was coming, and the Bible declares that he looked up when he got to a certain point, Sister Sylvia. The Bible declares that he looked up. And the reason he looked up is because so many people had looked down on Zacchaeus. Can I get a witness? All of his life, Sarah, he had been looked down upon. And some of you, some of you in here, all your life you've been looked down upon. I know it because I have too. All our lives, some, somebody looked down on Zacchaeus. But Jesus, as he was passing by, when he got to the spot, then he looked up. And he called Zacchaeus his name. Jesus knows your name. He knows your name, Dari. He knows your name. He knows what you're going through. He knows what we're going through. He knows that the bills are tough. He knows that you're not working right now. He knows that you've been in the unemployment line day after day. He knows that you are seeking a job. You're trying to find work. You, you've been incarcerated for years. You, your, your whole history, you've been in jail. You can't find a job. It's hard, but don't give up. Keep pressing your way through. Keep pressing your way through. Zacchaeus had tenacity. He had perseverance. And he was determined that he would not give up. 
But when God puts something in your heart, don't give up on him. Proceed, regardless of what's in the way, regardless of who's in your way. If the Lord's calling you into ministry right now, go forth with all your heart. He'll provide. He will provide. I'm telling you what I know. So God, so, so, so after Zacchaeus, after God looked up and saw him and, and knew uh, uh, that Zacchaeus had been seeking him, uh, it says in verse 8, Then Zacchaeus stood and said to the Lord, he said, Lord, I, I give you half of, my, I have give half of my goods to the poor. And if I have taken anything from anyone by false accusation, I give back fourfold. This man gave back 400-fold because, because he realized that he had an encounter with Jesus Christ. And the Bible says that in, in John 3.16, a very familiar scripture, it says, For God so loved the world that he gave. So when you come into contact with Jesus Christ, when you come with an encounter with Jesus Christ, something has to give. So he, so Zacchaeus gave back 400 fold. He gave back four fold. And Jesus said to him, today, today salvation has come to this house. Today, you can't relate, you can't delay. You, de 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 delay doesn't mean deny, but don't delay. When Jesus calls you to do something, which he's calling all of us, that, that there's a seed of righteousness inside of us. And Jesus is going to call you at some point or another. But, but, but Zacchaeus was being called by God. And God uh, acknowledged him and said, salvation has come to you this day. That's what the scripture says. And then it goes back to grace. To the song that the choir so lovely sang. Because in Ephesians 2 and 8, it says, for, grace, for by grace you have been saved through faith. And not of yourselves. It is the gift of God. Not of works. Lest anyone should boast. You can't glory in God's presence. See, you can't glory in God's presence. Don't try. Flesh cannot boast in God's presence. It's only because of his grace. And, and the, the part I like about it is, is when, when God accepted Zacchaeus. When God accepted him and, 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 and when Zacchaeus uh, offered God to come into his house. The crowd, once again, the crowd, they grumble. They complain. Just like we so often do. We grumble and we complain and that's what the children of Israel did. Remember? The children of Israel could have been a father alone. That God gave them a pillar of sun uh, by day, a pillar of fire by night to guide them. But yet and still, they complain. Then God, they used to complain about not having enough to eat. Then God, it fed them with manna. Yes. So my brothers and sisters, I want you to know that the Lord says in his word that my sheep, Hear my voice. I know them, and they follow me. I give them eternal life, and they shall never perish. Neither shall anyone snatch them out of my hand. Jeremiah 29 and 13 says, And you will seek me and find me. When you search for me with all your heart. Antonio, can I get a little bit of help right there? He says, if my people, Dari, if my people who are called by my name shall humble themselves and pray and seek my face, and then I'll hear from heaven and heal their land. But you've got to humble yourself, my brothers and sisters. We've got to humble ourselves. For the word of God says, for God so loved the world. He did, just didn't say, for God loved the world. He said, for God so loved the world, Pam, that he gave his only begotten son. That whosoever believeth in him shall not perish, but have everlasting life. Can I get a witness? As I draw to a close, we are all small. We are all small in our own world. We all face the crowds. Can I get a witness? We all must continue to seek Jesus because Jesus is seeking us. We are all small. We are all the outcast. We are all homongous. We are all alcoholics. We are all drug users. We are all not what we ought to be. And Jesus still seek and save those that are lost. Can I get a witness? I once was lost, but now I'm found. I 
was blind, but now I see. Jesus Christ came into my life because I was on my way to a devil's hell. I was on my way to sin. I was on my way. But Jesus, can you say that with me? But Jesus came and saved me. He looked beyond my faults and he saw my knees. He knew that I wasn't hitting on nothing. He knew that I wasn't hitting on nothing. But it's because of his grace and his mercy that I am here today. And I'm going to praise him if I got to praise him all by myself. I'm going to give him glory if I got to glorify him all by myself. I thank him every day because he's been mighty good to me. I want to say thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus, for being so good to me. Just like Zacchaeus, just like Zacchaeus, we are all small. Trust me, all of us from the pulpit to the back door. You might think you're all that in a bag of chips, but you're not. In God's eyes, we are all small. Trust me. Trust me. And if God took one, took one breath away from you, where would you be? It's only because of his grace and mercy that we are still here today. I want to say thank you. Thank you, Lord. Wise men and women, mankind in general, still seek Jesus. The doors of the church are now open. If there is one today, I'm begging you, I'm pleading with you. If there's one today that don't know Jesus in the free pardon of your sins, I'm asking you, I'm begging you, yes, please come. Please come. Give me your hand and give God your heart. It doesn't matter that pastor's not here. Pastor wants to see someone come and give their life to Christ. That's all. If you know that you're outside of the ark of safety, if you know that you're not saved, I'm asking you, I'm begging you, please come right now. Please come. And the only reason I'm asking you to come publicly, because Jesus Christ said, that if you confess with your mouth, you got to confess with your mouth and you got to believe in your heart that God raised Jesus from the dead and you shall be saved. I'm serious about this. Please, will you come? If you're outside of the ark of safety, will you please come? Will you come? In the scripture, in Luke 19, God told Zacchaeus, he said, come down. And he said, quickly. He said, quickly, quickly, quickly. Because see, Jesus Christ, he had to move on. He had some place to be. He had to go and face the cross. Ha, 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 yeah. Oh, ah, yeah, he was going. Hey, he was going to the cross for my sins and yours. So he told Zacchaeus, make haste and come down quickly. Come down quickly. Come, I'm begging you, come down quickly. You know God's tugging at your heart. Come down quickly because tomorrow's not promised. Jesus had to move on to Jerusalem. Oh, yeah. He went on to Jerusalem and him quiet. He went on to face the cross. He, he, he was on a mission. He was on a mission, Brother Hope. He was on a mission for you and I. He was on a mission for your sins and my sins. Oh, yeah. Oh, he was on a mission for us. He had said, make haste and come down. Oh, yeah. Make haste and come down. Yeah. Yeah. Jesus knew that he had set his face like flint. <laughs> hey. He has set his face, Lord. He set his face for you. And he set his face for me. Woo! 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 
just like Zacchaeus, we have all fallen short. But he gave Zacchaeus a chance to get it right. Last thing, Deke, last thing, Deacon. I want you to know something. Back in Jericho, there were plenty of priests. They sat on the first couple of rows, just like we do. But guess who God called? There were plenty of priests in Jericho, Sister Tanya. But God called Zacchaeus, a man who was corrupt. He stole. I'm sure he drank. I'm sure. He had a big house, but he had no friends. He had cars, airplanes, trucks, but he had no one to ride with him until he had his encounter with Jesus. That's when Zacchaeus' life changed. Many of you are, op are operating. We're operating as a screwdriver when we should be a hammer. Many of us are hammers, but we're operating as a screwdriver. And what I mean by that, you can't use a screwdriver to do what a hammer does. Can I get a witness? And the only way you're going to operate as a hammer is if you go to Jesus and humble yourself. Zacchaeus humbled himself, and he ran, and he sought Jesus. He longed for Jesus. And little did he know when he sought Jesus, Jesus was seeking him all along. Thank you, Jesus. The doors of the church have been opened, but no one has come. And that's okay, because even after service, if you would like to give your life to Christ, we have ministers available. I'll be available. So just come anyway. It's okay. Thank you so much. I want to encourage you, and I want to challenge you to still seek Jesus. Choir members, musicians, we want to take this thing to another level. We got to seek Jesus. Deacons, to my deacons, my trustees, if we're going to take this thing to another level, we got to seek Jesus. We got to attend Sunday school. We got to teach in the back. You can't just come to church and go home Sunday after Sunday. You got to spend time in the Word. People are coming to people are coming to see the grow. People are coming. People are seeking Jesus. But if we don't seek Jesus, they won't find him. At this moment, we got a testimony. Amen. And he had um, a lot of pressure. So they're going to do surgery to try to relieve some of the pressure. So I asked everybody that know the words of prayer to pray for your neighbor's plate at Cutter School. It's Joe Richards. I uh, hope y'all know Joe. So it's Joe the one that uh, supposed to be having surgery uh, today. So uh, all of my family that's here, if you can stand, come and stand with me. And the one that, uh, if you don't feel like coming up here, stand with me all. But, uh, Let us stand right where you are. <clears throat> Just for a moment. <clears throat> we are a praying church. We are. And, and we have an a, a, a intercessory prayer team. Yes. So we ask that all the intercessory prayer warriors to please come forward. Thank you so much. Thank you so much. And for those of you that just know the words of prayer, just intercede on our behalf, on their behalf. Let us pray. Most gracious and most kind Heavenly Father, 
We come to you, Father, because we don't know of anyone else to go to, Lord. We come to you, Father, because you are the maker and the creator of all things. In heaven, in earth, and up under the earth. Father, we come to say thank you. And Father, we thank you because you were wounded for our transgressions and you were bruised for our iniquities and the chastisement for our peace was upon you and for that we say thank you. Father, we know that you hear our prayers, oh God. Father, we know that you solicit our prayers and we're thanking you right now in advance, Lord God, for what you're going to do in this family. We thank you for what you've already done and we thank you for what you're going to do. Father, we just beseech your throne, Lord God, because you said that we can come boldly before your throne of grace to find help in the time of need. So, Father God, we need you right now. We need you right now, Lord God. Father, we trust you. We trust you, Lord God, because we know, Father, that when you're in the room, good things happen. We know when you're in the room, healing takes place. When you're in the room, delivering takes place. When you're in the room, sin sick souls are healed. When you're in the room, lives are changed. And for that, we say thank you. Father God, we petition your throne one more time, knowing God, Lord God, that you are the maker and the creator of all things. We thank you for your son, Jesus. We thank you for our heavenly father. And we thank you for the cross, Lord God. And we thank you for the blood that came pouring down just for us. Thank you once again, Lord God. Thank you in advance for what you're going to do. Father, hear our prayer. Hear our prayer, Lord God. In Jesus' precious name, we ask this prayer. Amen, amen, and amen. Thank you, dear God. Thank you, dear God. Yes, yes. As the musicians play softly, as we prepare our hearts for communion, if those of you that may that need to slip out, you can at this time. But we ask that you prepare your hearts for communion. Communion is an ordinance <clears throat> that was started by Jesus Christ. Jesus was in the upper room with his disciples. And this was on the eve of his crucifixion. So Jesus, again, was preparing to face the cross. And he provided this ordinance so they would remember him. They would remember not only his, his crucifixion, but his resurrection as well. But also, in my studying, and I found out that Jesus also wanted them to remember their exodus from Egypt when he brought them out of slavery. And that's what he wants to do for you and I. Are there anybody that has been omitted with bread or wine? Anybody omit it? Anybody omit it? Okay, let us pray. Most gracious, most heavenly Father, we thank you, Lord, for the bread that represents your body and the wine that represents your blood. Father, we thank you because you paid it all in Calvary's cross. Father, you made him who knew no sin to be sin for us. And for that, we say thank you. And now, Lord, we, we remember this. We remember your blood, your, your bread that represents your body. And remember the blood that you sacrificially gave for us on Calvary's cross. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. <clears throat> First Corinthians chapter 11. First Corinthians chapter 11, verse 23. It says that, for I have received of the Lord that which I also delivered unto you. That Jesus Christ, on the same night in which, which he was betrayed, he took bread and he gave thanks and he broke it. And he said, take, eat, do this in remembrance of me. May we eat together.
after supper, he also took the cup and he said, this cup is the new covenant in my blood. This do in remembrance of me. Let us drink together. Amen. The Bible declares that after they took the communion that they sing a song. We can't sing a song. We can't go out into the Mount of Olives, but we can sing a song. So we thank God for the remembrance of his sacrificial death. All minds and hearts are clear. Will you please stand? <clears throat> please let us not forget the foods in the back. Any other announcements? Oh, yeah, yeah. Any of that? We're going to bless it. We're going to bless food. Thank you so much. Let us pray. Heavenly Father, we give you honor, glory, and grace. And grace, Father, we thank you, Lord, for the food, Father. And we thank you, more importantly, for the hands that prepared the food. We ask that you remove all manner of disease from it, dear God. And we pray that this not only be for our physical needs, but our spiritual needs as well. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen and amen. And everybody said, Amen. Everybody said, Amen. Everybody said, One more time, amen. Everybody said, Thank you, Jesus. Amen. Amen. Now, unto him who is able to keep you from falling and to present you faultless before the throne of his present glory, to the only wise God, our Savior, be glory and majesty, dominion and power. And everybody said amen. 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 And amen. Amen. amen.